Good morning, and welcome to my very first review on this channel. Distributed by Paramount, the $45 million film was released in the fall of 2016, receiving quite a bit of praise from critics and audiences, with a total domestic gross of over $100 million. And that's not counting worldwide returns. So uh, let us begin by breaking down the different parts that make this film and see just how well I think it is. Also, warning here, all of this is my personal opinion and no one else's. If you don't like hearing someone's critique of a widely liked film, then please click off this video and do something else. For the rest of us, let's begin. Linguistic expert Louise Banks, played by Amy Adams, explains through narration that she had lost her only child, Hannah, to an incurable disease and is living alone and working as a professor in, insert name here, university when news of 12 mysterious objects land on different parts of the earth. Luis was then brought in by the military through Colonel G.T. Weber, played by Forrest Whittaker, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, alongside scientist Ian Donnelly, played by Jeremy Renner, to study the creatures that came in these floating objects and figure out why they had come to Earth. After a couple months of interacting with the aliens, aka hedipods, Louise has figured out how to read and write their language, but is experiencing a weird case of convenient flashback-itis involving her daughter. This is important. Please be sure to remember this. When Louise was pushed by a colonel and other military officials to ask the hedipods the big question, what is your purpose on Earth? The answer they were all given was, we offer you a weapon. To which everyone, with the exception of Louise and Ian, believes that the aliens are intended to give some sort of deadly weapon to the humans that they can use to fight and kill each other off with. And with China encouraging others to blow their spacecraft sky high, the pressure is on for Louise to figure out what this weapon really is. After some soldiers go rogue and set off a bomb in the spacecraft, the hedipods isolated themselves and only allowed Louise to join them in their last conversation to help her figure out that their language is the weapon. Turns out that when someone understands the hedipod's language, that said person can perceive time differently than normal people and have visions of the past and future. Louise uses this newfound ability to convince China's General Shang, played by Tiz... Tiz... Ma... I am so sorry. To stop his plans for an all-out war with the aliens. She succeeds and peace came across the Earth as people in different countries start talking with each other again and the spacecrafts disappear from existence. There's a smidge more to the story here, but I'm not going to say it all, so that you have some reason to see the film for yourself, if you haven't yet. Amy Adams did very well playing as a scared, lonely woman who was asked to perform a near-impossible task of translating an alien language. Though I didn't get into her character in the beginning, due to her being so quiet and reserved, I later enjoyed her as I watched her slowly stand up for herself against the stubborn higher-ups around her and grow more confidence in herself. Jeremy Renner, who I've known him as the action hero Hawkeye, now plays as an excitable scientist who deems his field of work being superior in every way possible. But his character did surprise me a bit. And what I mean by that is, I thought that due to his ego showing early on, I thought he would be the one to mess everything up for Luis and piss the hedipods off. But instead, he was the one who supported Luis and helped her figure out some of the symbols they were given. The ones who actually messed things up were the rogue soldiers who tried to blow up the hedipods. Speaking of the hedipods, Abbott and Costello are the two only aliens we see in the film. Abbott is the skinnier, quieter one, while Costello is the bigger, louder type. Their appearance is predictable as I assume that they will appear tentacle-like while watching the film. So that was some disappointment there, but... Not that big of a deal since I was still able to enjoy the film. The music in the film was a little strange and confusing to me. Which fits in the theme for the film, alright, but hearing some strange noise in the music it takes me out of the story and shifts my focus onto what the heck is making that sound. It's distracting and weird in the film, but by itself... No, it, it's still weird. With the exception of one song that plays both in the beginning and in the end of the film. The sound of the strings greatly gives the scene an emotional boost as to what Luis is feeling and is very pleasant on the ears. 
Check the soundtrack on Spotify, and you'll see what I mean about a majority of the songs sounding weird, and the exception called On the Nature of Daylight, which is actually from another film called Disconnect, which is a completely different film, but interesting that they share the same music. Visually, the film is pretty, massive, claustrophobic, and slightly misleading to create surprises for the audience and get them to understand the message the film is trying to convey. Whenever Louise is alone, either physically or mentally, the scene is always in darkness or clouded to show, well, Louise is scared and alone. But when Louise is finally understanding Abbott and Castello with Ian, the scene is brighter and in a way filled with hope and determination. And the way the beginning of the film is shot really sets the mood as to where the film is going and who Luis is as a character. Or so you might think. Let's just say this is a kind of film that you have to watch it twice to get the film's full message. Also, the film likes to scale things, showing how massive or how tight some places are compared to our characters. A great way to build tension between our characters and makes the audience question whether or not something bad is going to happen. Or vice versa. So, understanding the language causes people to have visions of the past and future, but doesn't Ian or anybody else also suffer from these visions? They were all studying the language. Why is it just her who is seeing her life bounce around everywhere? Basically, I do feel that the film rightly earned the praise it has gotten when it was first released. If you're looking for a sci-fi film that isn't full of needless action scenes or alien gore, and want something that makes you think heavily as to what is going on and what the characters are saying, then this is the film for you. If you want lots of cool action scenes and alien goop everywhere, then you have stumbled upon the wrong place. I am sorry. I enjoyed the film with the twists ahead and some feels that came along for the ride. It's just one of those films that fully uses emotions and brain power to draw the audience into its story. A high recommendation for me to see it once, and then twice, to catch all the little details you might have missed. I know I have. Thank you for watching, and if you liked my review, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have a film in mind that you would like to hear my opinion on, shoot me a message through my Facebook when I ask for any more recommendations. Thanks again, and see you all next time. Good night!